Hi everyone, it's Bob here from imanageperformance.com. Uh, thought I'd just spend a few moments this time tuning you into one of the problems that I hear from people quite frequently when we're out on the road working with people, helping them develop their management skills. You know, a real challenge often is knowing what style of manager to be. And many people feel that they must become one style of manager and uh, you know, kind of stick to a groove. Whereas you know, the reality is we're much better being the type of manager that has a number of different approaches based on whatever that circumstance is and that situation that uh, they're faced with. And having you know, the, the toolkit of what are those available styles and when do I use what style uh, is something that people really miss. So here's a model that we've developed that uh, helps us tune into four ways we can approach any given situation based on two primary indicators. So the first of those along the bottom here is this idea of will. You know, what's the will, the attitude, the motivation, the energy, the engagement of the individual that you're managing? And so we've got a scale here of low or high where we can determine, you know, whether that that person is really on board or not uh, in their thinking and their approach and their willingness to, to, to engage with the task in hand. Versus on this scale, we've got skill. So that is all about the individual's competence whether they are able to do the job, you know, whether they've got knowledge and experience and uh, practical skill to do, do something and carry that out. So again, high or low, we can pretty quickly understand where somebody is on that scale of most jobs that we're working with on uh, in, in almost any situation. So we've got, with that, four potential approaches. Let's go to this bottom left-hand corner to start with. And so if we think about low level of skill but also low will what we need to do as a manager in that situation and what our approach needs to be is quite directive we need to be more tell and there's a couple of reasons for that one is that we do have to get real with people about what's expected of them in terms of 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 input and energy and so there is a real uh, piece in here about moving them up that will scale by really starting to be, be crystal clear and direct clearly about expectations and what's required of people. But the second really important thing about being directive in this uh, situation is that you need to upskill the person. You need to help them develop their capability. So at this stage with low level of skill, that could very well be you know, quite granular. You have to get down into the detail and, t- detail and tell people how something should be done, what's required of them, what uh, process must be followed, and uh, you know, the real parameters and details of the output. So a very directive style. If we move over where we've got a higher level of will, but still that lack of, uh, of capability, then we move into a management style that is much more supportive than directive. So what we're doing here is actually looking to be alongside the person to provide them support where they need support. But it's more than that. It is here about taking people with the right level of, of will and giving them opportunity because that is how they will learn. They will learn through experience. They'll gain skill by experiencing situations. So you know, we will be looking for opportunity to give them a chance to try something. We will be allowing them to step into our shoes on occasions to, 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 to pick up ro- roles that we're currently doing. We're helping show them what's required in all of that. So a much more supportive way of developing people than that directive way. So we come up here and skill increases, but we've got this low level of, of will. Then the management style has to be one of encouragement. I would say actually it's really hard to motivate people and I, I, I only say that because of my own experience. I can be really motivated about something one day and the next day you know, I can lose that motivation. So up here, rather than thinking I must motivate, I must motivate in my encouragement, uh, I, I think this is much more about getting commitment. Because commitment gets people up in the morning. It gets athletes up in the morning when they don't feel motivated. Commitment to going for gold or whatever it is at the Olympics. So commitment is a much more powerful thing than uh, trying to motivate people, which is, you know, can disappear and blow on the wind. So up here, as managers, we know the person's got the capability and the skill. They've got the experience and the knowledge to do it. 
But what we've got to do here is encourage them to be committed to, uh, you know, kind of join the cause, as it were. And uh, what I would be doing very typically up the top here is I'm trying to develop somebody you know, with that skill away from this kind of a low level of will is really encouraging them to open their thinking and to recognise actually they're supporting a team as they do stuff. And so we're not just working at um, short-term motivation, but showing how actually their piece is a vital part of, of what we're committed to and we're working for a common good. So real leadership stuff in here really about articulating what that common good is and now kind of creating that within a team. Then as we come across then, so the fourth management style that we've got on our grid here is where we've got that high level of skill, high level of will. So these are people who are very, uh, very well positioned to grow and develop. And we should be looking to delegate in those situations. We should be looking to take them and open up their thinking, open up the opportunities that they're involved in. And really, this is a way I want to distinguish delegation in this top right-hand corner. It is not just giving somebody jobs to do. It is far from that. It's much more developmental. And it requires us to hand over the, the, the mechanics of the, the, the brain piece as well as the operational piece. So I would say a really a kind of trivial example of this would be, now to dump something on somebody literally might be to say, every Wednesday you empty the bins. Uh, and of course, you know, come Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, the bins are overflowing. They follow that instruction. We've got a problem. Delegation would do that differently. It would say, I would like you to be responsible for emptying the bins as and when they need it. So I'm, I'm adding into that delegation process the requirement that they engage brain, they engage with the task. They don't just mechanically do something, but they think about it and own the, the, the thinking around that task as well. So, you know, that, that would be my ideal position to have tea, a team of people who have that high level of skill, high level of will, that I'm actually engaging on a day-to-day -day basis to do great things and use their brains as well as use their hands and their, and their, their skill. So four approaches, four tools, really, that we have as a manager and, uh, you know, context of situation, skill or will, and a guide here as to when I might choose one approach over another approach with a different individual. I hope that's useful. Uh, do visit our website. There's loads of free learning stuff on there. imanageperformance.com. Uh, connect with us on Twitter, at imanage, a brilliant Twitter feed, growing like crazy at the moment. So, so join us in that community. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again and, uh, and share some more learning very shortly.